All right. Thank you. This is the title of the LARP. So, right before Christmas, uh, me, Almay Lofsson Edgar, and Christian Österby Ellerby looked at each other and thought, how hard can it be to make a LARP in four months without burning out? Can't be that hard, right? Um, and four months later, approximately one month ago, we made that happen. And uh, as Jörg said, we're, I'm going to share a little bit of the things we learned and the design choices we made to make this happen without burning out. Right. I think the most important design choice that we made is also in the title. Um, it is that we wanted to make a game that was feel good. Not only for the players, but also for us as organizers. Um, because in game, there's been a lot of queer games already about death and despair, and we wanted to mix that up a little bit and have a feel good game. Uh, but also because organized burnout is very much a thing. And um, I think a lot of organizers have started to adhere to um, something I would like to call to eat the bitterness. It's a Chinese proverb that says that if you suffer well enough, that becomes a virtue eventually. And uh, I just wanted to feel good. I just wanted to organize a nice LARP. So you know what? Screw that. We thought, no, we're going to make this LARP a breeze. We're going to make this LARP lovely for us to organize and lovely for the participants to play. Um, but we didn't want to uh, lower our standards. However, we decided to take one drastic measure that wasn't lower the standards, but to lower everyone's expectations. This does not mean to make a bad LARP. Um, it means to take a bunch of other measures in order to make that happen. So the first thing we decided to do was to take shortcuts. Um, there's many ways of doing this, um, and we chose two paths. The first one was to choose our audience. Um, this LARP happened a month ago, and during that very weekend, there was four different other LARPs going on. So we decided we don't need to market this broadly. This is a LARP for like 16 to 20 players. We will choose the queers and the Nordics, because this is our tar target audience. Um, it aligns with our desired play style, and uh, there's a lot of like things that you get for free when you choose your audience very that directly. This is not the solution for every LARP, but this worked for us. Um, and the other shortcut that we took was that we removed a lot of irrelevance that we found like we don't need this for this game. Just because it's expected for a LARP nowadays to have certain things doesn't mean that we need to. For example, we didn't serve breakfast. We decided that there's a kitchen, this game fits perfectly well with people just coming into the kitchen in their whatever, pajamas or whatever, to get the breakfast whenever they wake up, be it at lunch. Um, that meant we could sleep in, and that meant we were better organizers in the afternoons. Right? And this is doable through clear communication. Um, as long as you tell your players that, no, we're not going to serve breakfast, or we're not going to give you like pre-written full characters, you're going to make that yourself. The players are surprisingly, um, not maybe surprisingly, but like they're very, like, you know, um, good at adhering to the circumstances. So as long as you clearly communicate what shortcuts you're going to take, it's going fine. Uh, the second thing that um, we did in order to take shortcuts was to lend, burrow, and steal. So <laughs> this lab uh, happened because uh, the three of us and some other people decided to watch a reality show from MTV called Are You The One? Uh, the eighth season, watch it, it's great. Um, <laughs> And it's a reality show about um, dating and disaster queers, right? Um, and the reality show format is just so good because you get so much things for free. It's like you get the colorful and over-the-top characters that's not realistic at all, but also very realistic. You get pacing, you get activity, you get these vote-outs, you get like um, interactions with the camera. You, you as an organizer can even go in and like, I didn't like that scene. Can you do this a little bit more dramatically, please? Love that choice. And it's like completely diegetic. Um, one example of this is that this is the promo picture for the actual show. And this 
is what we did. <laughs> so, you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel if the wheel is already invented. Just make sure to, you know, not do any copyright infringement. That's not cool. <laughs> um, and the last big thing we did was that if you want to design the lab, which you want, lab should be designed, <laughs> um, make sure to put energy where you get the most out of it. This does not only go for the players, uh, but also for the organizers. If I find something that sparks joy, I can put energy in it, I'll get more energy out of it, and uh, everyone will be happier. So um, two things that we did to like maximize design energy was, the first thing was uh, character creation. We did decided not to write full characters. Uh, this is a reality show lab, so there's no pre-written relationships. Very convenient. Um, however, we wrote small character blurbs to get a variety of characters um, for the game, and then the players themselves got to send their own character concepts in by an in-game application form. The questions for the in-game application forms can be blended, borrowed, and steal, stolen. Um, so we could have stopped there, and we could have like great characters. Uh, we also could got get a hunch of what uh, if the players understood the concept of the game, and spoiler, they did. Um, but since we got so hilarious characters, um, we didn't want to just hog them by ourselves and then present them during the LARP. Instead, we decided to make character blurbs back to the players after they sent in this form in order to give people um, a hunch of what co-players they will play against and uh, kind of build hype for the game. So, for example, this is one of them. This is uh, Elena Andersson's character. The character concept is the Jim Bro Dude. Um, <laughs> and as you can see, it has some basic facts, some character traits, some very out-of-context quotes that I chose personally. And uh, this we made for every character. And it gave you a great hunch of um, what characters you will be interacting with, but also a very fun way to build hype before the game. Right. Um, and the other design choice that we decided to put a lot of energy in, because it sparked a lot of joy, was to use video streams as a game engine. So, um, this is a lot about interpersonal relationships, right? Um, which means there's a pretty high probability that people would like to play on sex. And uh, when it comes to that, there's a couple of problems. Um, some people are too thirsty to brain. Some people decide that sex is a private matter. We will remove ourselves into a private room and close the door. Nobody can see this. And it, not, it doesn't happen to everyone. It doesn't happen to every lot. But this is like a pretty high risk. So to combat that, we decided that you can only have sex in one place, at the entire venue. Um, this room is up some stairs, over a bridge. Everyone can see your stride or pride or walk or shame before you get into that room so everyone can play, oh, they're going to have sex, right? And we could have easily stopped that. People could eavesdrop from the outside, people could keep the door open or whatever, but we decided to take this a step further. Sorry, um, this is the sex room, by the way. <laughs> Um, we decided to put up a camera in the sex room that was constantly streaming to a screen in the main room. <laughs> this way, sex could never be a private matter, and instead of removing themselves from the game, it became a game engine. A good thing is also that you could hear from the sex room what hap was going on in the real room. So you could hear people cheering on in the background or, s or booing or whatever, <laughs> which was absolutely amazing for the game design. Um, nothing is um, recorded. You will not see the content. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, this worked very well for the players, and a lot of good drama came out of this. Correct. That's what it's called. Please watch the show. The show is great. Um, so, that was two things that we decided to put a lot of energy in, partly for, because the player, uh, for the players, but partly also because it sparked joy for us, because we also got to see the stream, right? <laughs> so, to summarize, things that I think is relevant when you make a feel-good game is do not eat a bitterness. Lower everyone's expectations through clear communication. Uh, do not reinvent a wheel if you can lend, borrow and steal and focus on the design elements that spark joy for you and your players. 
Thank you very much.